Whoa. Go figure. Freezes the moment we get started. Because it wouldn't be my... Uh, there we go. It wouldn't be my webcam device, whatever that thing's called, if uh, it wasn't locking up. may have to get a new one one of these days. No hurry, though. Uh, all right, so... Uh, let's fix that there. There you go. Uh, had a silly idea. Maybe every Saturday I will try and think of a micro game to go through and make. Today is going to be hopefully Minesweeper. So um, I think we can actually make this with very few uh, outside scripts. Um, one that I may grab just because I may end up using it is the... Uh, event system that I basically always use everywhere. But I like that because it's just very nice to be able to, what was that? I saw something pop up, which is uh, very nice to sort of communicate between layers. So we'll just copy that. And uh, we may not need it. And I'll explain why as we get going. Uh, let's create a folder. Eh, we, you know what? We're going to live on the edge and put a space in there. Okay. Come back over here. We should see it load. And then from there, we can get started. I'm actually going to probably, for the time being, just use uh, game uh, art that we make inside of Unity, just using their default. Uh... Oh, why are you not letting me do that? Rename, oh, no? What about delete? Will you let me delete it? Okay, it'll let me delete it. Let's try that again. All right, you're killing me here. Um, okay, so we, the first thing we need to do is make a uh, board generator. And for some reason, I don't know if I've lost like IO. How weird. I'm gonna have to close and reopen Unity. You know what? Let's do that. So we're gonna close and reopen this real quick and then get going because if it's not gonna work for me, that's less than ideal. Where are you, hub? Should hopefully open up pretty fast because, uh, yeah. There you go, you can put that right there. There's nothing in it, so if it takes a while, I will be baffled. Uh, create new folder. Zero one. Okay, there you go. So let me get you back in here. There you go. All right, so now we got a folder. Don't know why it didn't work before. C sharp. Uh, board game generator. So we've got a class. This will be for generating the actual board. There's a few things that we may need for it before it can even get started, which is the actual tile itself. So you know what? Let's make that real quick. And game piece. Ah, we don't need a folder for that. Game piece. And I don't... Well, yeah, we will need a class for that, ultimately. But first, we need to make the actual prefab. And while we're at it, we're going to also make a folder for scene and create a new scene because I don't like... I guess we could just move this one over and rename it, but let's do that. Yes, that's fine. Okay, I just like things being tidy. All right, so we got our game scene. It's got a camera. It's currently set to 1920 by 1080. That's perfectly fine. Uh, just got an orthographic camera using all the default settings. That is fine. So we're going to create a square and get this scale down to one and then for the square let's say that's probably a better size game piece we'll slap that script on as well and there's a few things that we need here so this is currently the Box collider. Uh, this is currently just the default. This would be the tile that you would be clicking on. So from there, uh, we are putting this on there because it's not a UI object. So we're going to be using on mouse down. And uh, I'll check later on the phone to see if 
that actually works at all times. On mouse down. Uh, do we want on mouse down or on mouse up? Oh, great question. Up and debug.log. I works. Which you should. I works down. I works up. Go back in. We are currently missing the event system, so quickest way to add that, there's a couple ways. One is just to put a canvas in the scene, and then it'll do it for you, and then you don't have to worry about it. Um, the other way is to just make it and add the components. I prefer the simple solution. Why it isn't there by default, I'm not quite sure, because you're basically always going to need it. I guess, yeah, that's not true. If you have a scene that's being used to just sort of uh, control everything, which is what we're actually doing in the main game project. All right. So as we can see right thereabouts, both the things are working, so we're already off to the races. Uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to create an, uh, a sprite sheet, well, sprite sheet for the different stages of this object. And what we're going to do is create a uh, scriptable object, I think, is the way I want to do this. Because I'm thinking... The easiest way to modify these at a later date if you just wanted to reskin it, but we'll just go with that. So, uh, game, piece, art. You know what? Let's just put it in the game piece for now. And then we can move it later once we know, once we have a scope of what we're actually doing. So, private, sprite. And the first sprite is going to be the uh, default sprite. The second sprite is going to be our uh, flag. And we've got the private, uh, the next sprite will be the uh, bomb sprite, whatever that amounts to. And then private sprite, uh, blank sprite. And this is the spot when it's, if you click on a sp uh, cell and there's nothing there, this will be that equivalent, you know, seems seems uh, reasonable. And we need to serialize all these so we can see the, see the mini inspector. Okay. And... Drop this over as a prefab. Go into the prefab editor. So for the default sprite, where is that square coming from, eh? Down here. Okay. In the packages section. So we're actually going to go in and steal these so that we can actually see them more easily when we're... Well, actually, let's double check. Can we get to them from the asset section? Hidden? There we are. Okay. So we don't need to steal them. They were just hidden. That's fine. Unless you close it like a numpty, and it's not fine. All right, hey, we got a little couple of people. That'll be fun. Uh, so for the default, we are going with the square, and then we got square. How big are these? With border, sure. And then we've got uh, for the. We're in the. No, we're not. Let's do that again. Square. And then we've got the next we're on to the flag sprite. Any of these look like a flag? Mm. You can probably use that eyeball, I think that's acceptable. Because you're watching it, you know? Yeah, nice. Nice big, big bright eye. And then we need the bomb sprite, which I suspect will just be a circle. And then finally, the blank sprite will be still square. I suspect I want it to just be a slightly grayed out square. Got anything here like that? Oh yeah, there were letters too. I didn't even think about that, but 
because the bomb could have just been a an M. Well, let's make a copy of this one. So let's go find that. Square with border. Yeah. Bring it up here. Are oh, you not gonna let me do it that way? Well then. I have the power here. What I'm doing is going into, there we go. Now we have access to that. So actually what we probably, well, yeah, we can just affect the color in the code. So that's fine. So it can remain a square. There's your corner, okay. So now we've got our different pieces. And now we have, what are the states? So that's the next thing we need to do. Public enum state. And we've got, obviously, uh, dummy, I like to do this just so if I forget to set something in the code somewhere, it's still, I'll, I'll immediately notice instead of it defaulting to what the zero state will be, which is default. And then we've got flagged, bomb, and uh, blank. Or, yeah, we'll go with that, okay. So then we have our, uh, we might as well just make it public. There's no need to reinvent the wheel here. So now we've got our state, which uh, defaults to dummy. Which it would do anyways, but I'm just explicitly setting it here. And, um... oh no, that's not true. We do actually want this to be for a function because we want to be able to update the sprite when the state changes. Public void change state. And then it's going to be uh, private state state public state. Private set. Again, we'll serialize that just so we can see in the inspector for debugging later. I'm sure we're gonna mess something up. And then down here, we just do a nice little switch statement. And uh, if it's default, do this. If it's, what do we got? Oh, right, uh, what was that? Was it alt tab tab? Let's try this. State, tab tab, no. trying to remember there was a hotkey for auto completing switch statements so let's see if we can figure this out let's see hold on i want to go find this real quick uh visual studio so it's uh press do switch tab tab, so SW tab tab, and then we do state. Ah, it didn't quite work, okay. Oh, there we go. You just gotta be patient, okay. Cool, I like that a lot. So now we don't have to worry about typing all that in. Spread them out because we're not a monster. And there's a few that we don't need to cover. That's those two. Eba.log. Uh, and you know what? Let's do this real quick. Um, Oh, no, we don't even need to do that, because we already know. Change my state from this, this dot state to state. So this will tell us what it was previously, and then it will tell us uh, what we're switching to. Let's 
stink. And then from there, we go and do the work, right? So we need access to our sprite renderer. Render. And, uh, let's see, will this work? I've actually never tried this before, so. We're going to try it. And if it doesn't work, we won't do that again. Okay, so down here, the uh, sprite renderer dot sprite, whoops, s render dot sprite. Oh my goodness. I'm So my tab key is no longer really sticking to my keyboard, and uh, I keep missing the little nubbins. Default sprite. And in fact, you could do this as an array of sprites and just have them all line up with your enums. I'm just not doing that right now because it's not in my interest to uh, reinvent the wheel. So let's actually say here, uh, sprite target sprite equals null. And then down here, s render dot sprite equals target sprite. And then up here, we'll just set that target sprite. Yeah, that's the ticket. Okay, so that's all good. Except for this non-closing bracket, that was not great. Oh no. Oh, we probably don't need these anyways. Yeah, that's all we need. Okay. So now we need to set some values for the game piece. And I think, like I said, we could, we can diversify it later, but we might as well go with the shortest path to the solution and then optimize that once we're done, as opposed to trying to get it right the first time every time. So the next thing we need to do is, uh, oh, we need to add a text text renderer to these things. Uh, and the reason for that is, uh, getting there. The reason for that, oh, what are you complaining about down here? Uh, okay, so it doesn't want us to do that. Well, that's fine, we won't do it then. If you're gonna be rude about it. I'll just assign in the inspector. No skin off my back. Okay, so that's assigned now. So the next thing we need to do is we need to actually add a text mesh layer. Yes, probably should import the essential so that text mesh actually works. What a novel concept. Right, we gotta be in the scenes so we can actually see it. Okay, so... Mm, best course of action, I believe, is just scaling it. And then from there, making it actually square. So let's say 10 by 10. Zero that out, and then... Making it not white for one. There we go. Center and center. Scale to fit. And so this would be our number that determines how many bombs are, are touching in any particular spot, you know? So we'll start off and just put it at zero, even though it's never going to be zero. And it's uh, adjacent adjacency count. Now go back in here, private text mesh pro, eh, what is that? Using pro, 
Okay. Got it in one. All right. Adjacency count text. Text mesh. All right. Now we assign that. Now we're gonna do title uh, components down here. Title images and eh, sprites. Perfecto. And on click. We need to quote unquote consume the spot or trigger it. We've got a uh, public void trigger spot. This happens whenever you click on the spot or whenever a blank blank chain is going because when you click on a blank spot in minesweeper it spreads out and takes out all adjacent blank spots or whenever a blank spot is spreading so well that's something we need to get started in a moment here is we need to make that 2d array of all the generated spots private game piece And then, so trigger spot will oh, these aren't really states. Now that I think about it, these are types. The states would be uh, unclicked. What is this renaming? Um, fresh. And then these things actually would go elsewhere. Click enum. So the state is the state is currently in, and then we would have. I want to use the word type, but type is taken and it always drives me nuts. Um, let's go look at a thesaurus because this is something that's always bothered me. I love that I just. Kind? Variety? Sort? Kind. Yeah, maybe we'll go with kind. I've apparently searched for this a few times, looks like. <laughs> Blazon? Apparently that's a synonym for type. Category! Oh! Ooh! Hmm, I like that. So we've got, uh, again, dummy, because we want to make sure you're actually setting it. And then we've got uh, flag bomb blank. And then in, uh, on top of blank, there's actually one more, which would be uh, adjacent, because that's the tiles with numbers on them, tiles with nothing on them, tiles with a bomb on them. Uh, yeah, and I guess flag doesn't really count as a category. That's just something you do to the tile. So bomb blank adjacent are the three kinds of actual games pieces. And then we can actually just have a boolean, which is uh, public bool is flag bool's false. And, you know, you can just set it to true if you flag it. Which will be, uh... Mouse down and right click, I guess? We'll find out in a moment here. And then for these states, we've got, uh, fresh and consumed. And so when you're changing the actual state, if it's fresh, you're setting it to the default spite. If it's consumed, you are, uh... 
consume spot. You would be firing off consume spot. Public void set uh, category is actually where we're going to be doing this stuff up here. Public void start. S render dot sprite equals default sprite. We don't need to be setting that by hand. Although, if you're restarting the game, and we're pooling the pieces eventually... No, let's not take that for him. Again, it's too easy to get... Uh, oh, we don't have a set for this yet. Private category. Category? Public category. That word does not look real already. Okay, now we've got the category, which is the type of piece. This is our type of piece. Type is taken because C sharp is a monster. What a beautiful word to get stolen. Uh, this is the current of the piece. And this could be a boolean, but you know, it, this is just as effective and we could find later that we want to have multiple states. And maybe flag will become a state. You never know. Okay, so that's fine. And then for this category, switch to good category. Oh man, that is so handy. And then we'll get rid of this default because we don't care. We'll get rid of this dummy because we don't care. And then we're going to do the same thing as up here. Changing my category from category to category. Close category. Whoops. No, don't you do this to me. There I am. Okay, and then uh, now we really want to do this. Target sprite equals bomb. Blank. Jason. Wait, no. Uh, this is where we need to do the number. So this would be a value that is set when the piece is initialized. So and we are going to put that Close to things. We don't need all these open up. Public. Or, yeah, sure. Public int jsonc count equals zero by default. Jason bombs. Jsonc count equals Jason bombs. In fact, we could probably just call it that in both spots. This one, this song is supposed to be in... Interesting, Twisted Mansion. That sounds a lot like a Disgaea song, but it is not. <laughs> so basically, what's going to happen is when the board is made, it's going to init all of the bombs. In fact, we can just put this in here for, for the sake of it. Um, it's going to... to uh, first, it'll go through and randomly place all the bombs, and then it will iterate one more time through, and... For any spot that has 
uh, for every spot, it'll count every square around it in all eight directions, and then that number will be the, uh, the count. Which reminds me, each of these uh, cells likely needs a uh, position, positional piece of data. Oh, values. The circus of value. Okay. Uh, yeah, I guess these are both more important first. Heaven help us, they all expanded. And then, now that we have that information, we'll just clump them. Clumpy clump. Next thing we need is, uh, or to add, is the public vector to int position and we're just gonna leave it like that real simple to int position now the reason for this is when we go to do the recursive um excuse me yeah the recursive unfolding for the blank spots we want to be able to take the position of the the bomb or the tile and just ask it to check uh, up, right, down, and left. And the way that check will work is if we come down here to this consume spot is it'll be recursive. So when it checks the spot above it, it will call consume spot on that spot above it. And then that spot will do its loop, which again, you know, so basically it branches out in every direction until they terminate um, by not finding a, uh, blank, right, okay. And I forget, in Minesweeper, when it does the adjacency stuff, does it also, just check it real quick, does it also, Oh, it does show the numbers. Okay, so we need to make a note of that. This will show both blank spots and all adjacent numbers. Okay. That one's a bomb. Wow, some some somebody named Sai Genie has been playing a lot today. Anyways. That's my thing. So this will set the category, this will set the state. I think this is a good starting spot for getting it generated here. So public void build or generate board. And obviously we need a uh, int board dimension, dimensions. And we'll need to see if we can figure out the size of the squares in a moment here. But anyways, we'll make this a button. Which requires a bit of the old Cyrenex. And so it's going to be for uh, x equals... Whoops. Int x equals zero. x is less than four dimensions dot x. And then for y equals zero y is less than board dimensions dot y I press this and we need a how best to do this so that I can actually see it in the inspector window hmm we'll just make it a dictionary that's fine the key will be a vector to int, and the value will be game piece. And do that. Four.clear, in case we had one already. And then from here, we are uh, game piece instantiate. Game piece. Oh, 
Oh. Ha. Ah, we'll call it GP. And dot init will let me do it from there. Oh, well, okay. Oh, but we don't know. We don't know how many bombs we're chasing yet, so we'll actually need to split those out. Public void set bomb count. Int bomb count. Set bombs equals bomb count. So this will actually be removed from here. And then the position is new vector to int x, y. Okay. And when bomb count is set, the uh, adjacency count text mesh dot text will equal. If bomb count is greater than zero, it will equal uh, that number. Hmm? Oh, right, we're good, we're good. Uh, bomb count. Oh, whoops, I'm just doing it backwards. Bomb count. Otherwise, it'll be blank. And it's saying this needs to be two string, that's fine. So basically what we're saying is if the bomb count is greater than zero, then set it to a number, and then that also means that nothing for now. And then we need to change the state. that old little debug out, so we're cool. That's good. Okay. Okay, so the reason this isn't working is because the init is a void function, so it's not actually returning the value. We could have init return itself, but instead, I'm just going to move this down a line, because no reason to make it overly complicated. I mean, I'm going to at some point. I probably already have, but... So now, with that all done, uh, we're actually going to do a debug.log uh, thinking for a moment here. Uh, JSON utility dot JSON board. Oh wait, it won't do that because it cannot serialize dictionaries. That's fine. Debug.log. It's wow. Because we're obviously not moving the transform yet based on this value, so we need to work out the logistics there. I don't know why I'm tabbing so much. So this is all set. We'll come back. That makes sense because it's currently zero zero. Get rid of that. And the board game generator is currently a mono behavior, which means it needs to actually be on something. So we'll do that. Board game generator. It actually probably could be a scriptable object because it doesn't need to be in the scene as far as I'm aware. But cross that bridge when we get there. Let's say 10 by 10. So it should make a hundred of these things, which it did. And when we look, the last one is at 9, 9. All right, perfect. And if we start looking through these, yep, moving across, and then it pans over. Okay, so now we're going to say when it emits, we want to make its uh, transform dot position equal new. Wow, I'm on caps lock, huh? New vector three, and it's going to be 
position dot x position dot y and zero now this is going to be way too spread out like these things are going to be a billion miles apart uh top left to bottom right that is but it gives us a baseline to proof of concept make sure that we know our logistics are working and as we see zooming out we do indeed have a 10 by 10 grid okay so that's good uh, everything showing is zeros, which is both good and bad. It means that we need to actually adjust the... Well, no, no, because we're when we get to doing the adding the bombs, then that'll be fine. So now, um, we need to figure out dynamically the space between each of these pieces. In theory, it should be the width of the sprite times the scale. So we're going to try that real quick. Uh, it's been a while since I've tried that, so let's see here. Um, S renderer dot sprite dot width. That's in pixels. Is it bound? Well, let's try it. Rect dot x uh, width is fine. Debug dot log. Let's make that a log warning so we can see it easier. And a keen eye obviously noticed that the grid is going to the top right. I probably actually want it to go uh, bottom left, so. because this would be zero, zero, and we actually want zero, zero to be the top left corner. Um, 256, no, yeah, 256. Okay, so 256 is the actual dimensions, and doing a bit of math here. Yeah, you know, okay, that is probably correct. That does look to be about 64 pixels across. All right. Times transform.scale, local scale.x. And this will be, um, so right now it's moving by one. So do we actually want it to move by 0.25? Is that, is it the math even easier than I'm thinking? 0.25? No, not quite. 0.125? Ah, half the, half the scale, that makes sense. Just barely. Okay. So this should be 0.5 F. Uh, private float, not private, float scalar equals, it's going to be square, so we don't need to do both separately, and times scalar, times scalar, save that, go back, all right, ooh, that's a tight, Hey, board. Probably want a little bit of space there. Oh, yeah, and while we're at it, we might as well... This needs to be negative. And we might as well do the positional stuff down here. Now, zero, zero should be in the top left corner, which it is, and nine, 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 nine should be in the bottom right corner. It is. Okay. So now we need to set uh, some values up here. Have it float bomb. Bomb odds, I guess. We'll say, we'll say 
25% of the time for now. So we actually can set it. Um, it's if random dot value is greater than uh, oops. And this is probably it probably should be greater than or equal to or something some nonsense like that, but whatever. Set category. And so these ones will be bombs. And in theory. The next thing we would do is go back through the list. And uh, the game piece would now be game board. What do we call it? Just board? Board. Board. And uh, new vector to int board dimensions. Oh, sorry. X, Y. Or, okay. There we go. So that gets us, now we're iterating back through. This will get us the piece that we're looking at. And then we're going to say, uh, what values we got here? Check bomb count? Is that a... You know what, let's just write it real quick, and then we'll figure out where we want to go from there. So it's a... We can do it with vector ints, or... Start with negative numbers. We'll just do it with a, a real simple list here. So we don't need this anymore, we don't need to initialize anymore. So what we would be saying is uh, int bomb count equals zero. And then you're very easily just checking. GP dot position plus, uh, the, and, and I recognize there's a, a flaw in this logic that we will go over in a moment, which is out of bounds. So we'll, we'll want to adjust that. But uh, is category. So you'd be basically doing this uh, eight times. It's just uh, left, right, up, down. Or more accurately, left plus, so upper, whoops, you're adding uh, left and up, then you're just doing left, then you're doing left and down, and then you're doing uh, left. And, or sorry, just down at that point. And then it would be uh, right plus vector to int dot down. And that would be just right. And finally, right vector to up. And then we double check that we started with up. We did not, so we would actually end on that. So then it's uh, left, upper left, left, lower left, down, lower right, right, upper right, up. And in each one of these cases, we add. Not sure what you mean by unnecessary assignment. Anyways, peace out.
uh, set bomb count, bomb count. And so we would just do that over and over. Now, here's the issue. This positional data, we need to make sure We need to make sure that um, there's actually a square there, or a, or not a square. Yeah, yeah, no, a tile there. So this actually makes me realize the way we can do this is uh, private vector two int adjacent adjacent spots equals a new vector two int. This is gonna be an array. Nine, there's nine of them. And since that's uh, vector two int dot. Whoops. And two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine. So that's uh, left and up, left, left and down. Down. I actually want to do it later with the just the fully written out thing, but and then it's uh, right and down, right and nothing, right and up. All right, it would actually be eight because we the ninth one would be you. Left and up, upper left, 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 lower left, down, lower right, right, upper right. Up. Yes, okay. So now what we can do here in this section is for int Zero is less than use spots dot count or length, yeah. And we could probably change that to just say index. And so then it would be adjacent position equals adjacent spots index and then we would say uh, if board contains key gp dot position plus adjacent position then oh and only then we would check whether or not that is a bomb And then we would say bomb count plus plus. So in that way, we're able to cut out all of this nonsense. And then we can run this real quick and see how it goes. Bound to have some sort of issues, but. So we did hit a key not in dictionary. Less than ideal, since that's literally what I'm just writing that to find. Ah! So it's in this section before we've even done the thing. Interesting! And that's because we are not adding these to the dictionary. Fair enough. And so we've got uh, the. Uh, we just do gp.position, gp.position, and gp. There we go. All right. So, obviously, it is doing some numbers, but it looks like it's just counting every square. So, if we go look here, 
every single one got listed as a bomb. So this actually makes total sense because each one is seeing all of its neighbors except for the corners. And then they're all getting turned into circles, which again makes sense. Unfortunately, the circle shape is apparently bigger than the square shape, so we'll we'll have to figure that out. Uh, so with that in mind, yeah, I'll be a monkey's uncle. Let's see here. Let's swap that to. Because, yeah, we were actually doing 75% of the time. It still seems like it was every single one of them, though. Set category. Just in case, our defaults? Do we have the defaults? with that and we'll see how this works out. This should be a value between 0 and 1 and this should be a float. Oh, don't get stuck on me. Forces not be stuck. This didn't used to be a problem with Unity, but. wonder almost if it's because there's these two oh idea what if Oops. actually probably better I was curious if I can force it to compile nope okay well you got to see live uh something that Unity needs to fix, and I should probably just send in a bug report to them. Here's hoping I saved the scene. I think it did, though. like it wasn't saved but not in any catastrophic way reset attach this attach this I actually think this piece can be bigger So it's still making them all bomb, so we just need to figure out why. Oh, no it's not. It's only making about one in five bombs. Okay. So now we need to go back and look at our game piece. The init is fine. Let's 
that category. If uh, bomb count is greater than zero, category is adjacent, otherwise category is blank. And I actually, because we know what we know about the um, Minesweeper, how it unlocks both, I think, I think if I click a number spot, okay, so it doesn't. Oh my goodness, I'm just hitting all ones. Okay. So it looks like if you click on a number, it doesn't reveal all the other ones. Yeah. Maybe it's not even possible for that to happen. Yeah, I think so. Okay. All right, so we're still good. We're still good. So this is setting it to bomb. And then down here... Oh yeah, we should just go check. What's the saying for bomb counts on these things? This one thinks that it has four. So it makes sense that it would it would always think it's whatever the thing is. And then the sprite is being set to none. Which is fascinating. No, it's not. That makes total sense, actually, because that's coming over here to the switch. We don't have a default. So... Yeah, zigged when I should have zagged. Okay, so that's fine. And this is a similar thing where if the category is being set to bomb or blank, it actually needs this to be here as well, which is just furthering my belief that we can get rid of that one. So far, so good. Oh yeah, is it, is it on down or up? It's on up, okay. We can actually go into the game piece. We'll just make it uh, full scale because it looks like it'll all fit. Ah, more or less. We would just need to move, uh, move them all up a bit. But again, when we look at the adjacency count, So we'll just start from the beginning. We don't need this anymore. That debug's not helping us. So from dummy to fresh, which makes sense. It's initializing. And then what's the other state? Consumed? Right, so we can actually turn off this debug for now because we're not consuming anything yet. going down instead of up. Technically, this is all inverted, but it shouldn't matter because the total number of squares that is being talked to is the same.
Oh my goodness. It literally happened again. Did I at least save the scene? I think so. Well, at least I got video evidence this time, because I've had it happen before and wanted to report it, but... And build settings. Add open scenes. There we go. We're actually going to split this out a bit, so... Generating the board consists of a few different steps. The bomb section, we probably want to move. Like, it's slightly less efficient, but, uh, private void generate bombs, private void set adjacency. Because we want to track this every step of the way. And in that way, we could track better of what's happening. Okay, that's good. We don't want to add it again. This one, put that down here. So we're going to go through and actually make each a button. Then we can test them individually. And we'll think real quick. So this is saying with the position plus the adjacency, if it's a bomb, add to the count. Otherwise, it should be zero. All right, so we generate the board. Everything is currently zeros. And they're all, oh, they're default. Ah, all right. Bam, figured it out in one. And that's why you do that. So now we generate the board and then we fix this scaling. We generate the bombs, eh? And we generate the adjacency. Beautiful. Okay. So now we just need to do a few things. The first is we need to create a uh, board parent container that we can adjust. And this parent is going to be assigned here. And then what we can do with this is, um, assuming this is lock up on me again. We generate the board now. Oh, they didn't go in because I it's null right now. Okay. So what we do is we generate the board, and then we can move this parent uh, up. Camera to zero down, okay. Negative one. That's a pretty, seems like it's roughly even. And we could do some math later for it, but uh, that'll help us keep the board in the center of the screen. All right, and then save the scene. We can make the dimensions a little bit bigger. Oh yeah, can we just keep generating the board, I wonder? Oh, I need to be setting their local position. But 
Look at me, casual hour over here. Okay, so generate board. We can just do... Okay, so it doesn't destroy the previous ones. Public. Void. Clear. Board. Breach. Key. Value. Pair. This is very uh, tacky, but... In fact, I don't need to do this. I could just reset the pieces later, but I'm not going to worry about it for now. So, um, value pair dot value. Clear board. Yeah, so now, every time I do it, uh, it shouldn't keep growing. Normally you'd pull it and whatnot, but whatever. Generate. No matter how many times I click it, we see that it's not getting longer here. And then... Uh, set the bombs. Oh, interesting. Once I set the bombs there, position is corrected. That save. Transform down local position. Oh. You gotta set the parent before you, uh... Oh, or you have to, you when you use set parent, there's a boolean flag you can use that would also do this, but... Okay, that's still good. Generate the bombs and the adjacency. Okay. Generate board, bombs, adjacency, board, bombs, adjacency. Okay. Now, we'll move this one up, so I can keep them roughly in order. Generate, generate bombs. Normally you wouldn't do this like this, but again, we're just kind of moving through. Um, so the obvious issue that we see with the uh, bomb art is that it's enormous for one uh the text should not show object or yeah we get enabled because we don't want it to physically show and then when we set the category we actually don't want to set the sprite until the spot is consumed Because if you haven't clicked on it yet, yeah. You know. So we're gonna grab this, move that down here, and then we're gonna consume spot here. And we're getting close to where we get to do the uh, when you click on a spot, it spreads out thing. How exciting! Generate the board. All right, so we've got all of our board pieces. We click on one. We find that it's a blank. How exciting, it looks exactly the same. So uh, let's dot color equals color dot gray. Let's go with that. And then we're actually just gonna do that. Let's, instead of using different sprites, we're just gonna change the color. Color dot red. And then up here equals color dot white. So we'll do that for now since we already know that the square is the right size, but everything else is not. Okay, give it a sec because apparently it can't handle the speed. Generate our board, give it a click. Oh! Did you notice what I, I noticed? How big are the lighters on these things? 
Ah! <laughs> uh, I changed the size of them, but not the size of their colliders. Okay. Let's try that again. What? Why is... Why for art thou collider so large? I demand recompense! Okay, your collider looks to be the correct size. Now. It is safe. Am I really not hitting any bombs? Oh. No, no, there should be bombs here. Skepticism rising! Okay, I have an idea. I'm gonna write <laughs> write a script to consume. Private void. Consume all. For each key value pair. This way we can test immediately without, uh, and then we're just going to generate the board on start. Save us some trouble. Give it a second, because I'm paranoid. Already killed it twice, so. Generate the board. Uh, immediately realize we need to make this public, or actually we need to make it a button and not serialize it. Okay, we generate our board, consume all, everything turns gray. Obviously that's not... And we go back and we make sure that we did this right, so... Generate board, generate bombs. hitting this. Oh! We need to skip over the bombs themselves for the set adjacency. If gp.category equals bomb continue. Oh! Of course. Of course. What do you see? What are you zeros doing here? I know what you're doing here. Being bad. Okay, and then uh, adjacency. Oh, 
Okay. Let's give that a shot. Board is generated. There's a little bug flying over here. I'm watching it. I'll get it. Hey! So now we can do some testing. The first thing we notice is that this top square is blank. It has no number. So... Ah! Because literally, it's a blank. So if we were to have clicked it, it would have just done its thing. Alright, so did all of these look correct? They do. And it sure feels to me like... Perhaps... 25% is too high. Much nicer. Okay. So now we've got uh, all of these numbers up here to be correct. I'm looking around. Ah, how exciting, huh? Well, let's make it a bit bigger. Obviously, we need to do some sort of offset adjustment so that it's always in the center of the screen, but... Ooh, we got a four! How exciting! Oh, right, we gotta figure out why the colliders are the wrong size. So they're the right size here. And when we generate them, their size is one, their scale is one. Let's go see here. Wow, why is my text so big? Uh... Hmm? Somebody was asking about some kind of box collider problem, I guess, in a plug-in. And the author said you should really fork over the hundred dollars to tell us how it works in our newest version. Like, <laughs> what? No. Um. Do I need to? I don't really want to adjust in code, but am I gonna have to? I've actually never had this happen, so I'm a little bit perplexed. Yeah, when we go into the prefab, uh, let's try removing and adding a new one. We'll also try not childing and seeing if that helps. Oh, there we go. Nope. Nope, okay, and there's another thing we need to do down here. When the spot is consumed, uh, set state, no, set, change state. Ah, right, 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 okay. Private. States. Yeah. State dot cons state dot consumed. And there should be some errors over here that we need to check care care of. There 
there's one more, I think. No? Perfect, okay. Because we're not changing the scale. Ooh, that was a big swallow. I move when I reach for it is enough to get it out of the way. Wow. So it does sound like it might be the childing it thing that's causing it. Let's find out. Given that they're both one and one, it really shouldn't, but at least I thought they were. Yeah. No? They're just flat out huge when it... Huh. Now we get to find out if we can... ...adjust it during the init stage. Vector 2... Let's try that. That actually may be twice as big as it needs to be still. I think it needs to be 0.5. Transform... Uh, yeah, we can just do scalar, actually. Ah, there we go. Okay. Oh! That was the best of luck. Right, you're not parenting anymore, because I didn't save. Two! Ooh. Ah. Three. Uh, two. Hmm. Ah. All oh, right, because I have it set to one and four. <laughs> okay, so let's work on the code for consuming on click. It's a bit similar to adjacency, except it would be like this. Public void consume adjacent. And the step we need to take here is making sure that 
flag. So if it's a bomb, it won't try again. If it's a tile or number, it'll consume it. And once it's consumed, we just return here. Okay, so vector2 int position. And we're gonna say... GP if GP dot state equals consumed return so that we don't get stuck in an infinite loop and then we're going to say for each adjacent spot does it do adjacent for Where's my, where's my mind sweeper? It looks like it's just doing... So it stops once it hits a number. Okay. Position dot x, position dot i. And then we can clear this. So if the position equals a blank, then we would pass that new position through this. And then otherwise, uh, otherwise we would continue. So let's think about this for a moment. Value gets put through. We make sure if it's consumed already, we return. If it's not consumed, we start doing a for loop. Um, first thing we should actually do is actually consume it. So, if it isn't consumed... Okay, so grab piece, check if consumed. If so, return. Consume piece, check adjacent spots. Uh, and this would only be true uh, if tp dot uh, category is blank. Sorry. Consume piece. Now, could it be a bomb? I'm thinking here. Yes. So we, if it's consumed, we return. If it is not blank, I think it's just if it's a bomb. If it's a bomb, do not consume bombs in this fashion. Consume adjacent or blank. And then, if category equals adjacent, we return at that point. Do not check adjacents on adjacent tile or game piece. So then check for adjacent spots of blank tile. And then from there, doesn't equal a bomb. So we check every square round and consume, tell them to be consumed. In fact, do we don't even need this check here. 
we can just tell it to consume and then it comes when it goes around it'll say if it's a already consumed piece just get out of there if it's a bomb get out of there otherwise consume it and then if it's a numbered tile get out of there if it's not a numbered tile keep searching so I think that's good. And we could use the event system, but I'm actually going to just do... I'm just going to do this for now. Because we're, we're edging pretty close on this being done. So you'll, when you release, it will pass your value through the consume function. It will check if you're consumed, which you haven't been yet. It'll check if you're a bomb. And if you are, we need to do debug.log. We'll just, that will say warning. Game over. Um, and if you're not a bomb, it'll consume you. And we'll go make sure there's nothing cyclical there. Nope. Maybe that's fine. Okay. Let's go give it a shot. I should put it in a cheat code so I can actually see what's what. Okay, so... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We did not assign that yet. Oh. Uh, that's fine. I kind of forgot it's not a scriptable object. This is so tacky, but it's fine. <laughs> I'll fix it later. That's what stage two is for. Okay, so that one was adjacent, so you wouldn't expect it to. Yep, you wouldn't expect it to spread. Another adjacent. Oh, first try. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm not used to recursive functions working on the first try. Oh, I almost died there. Okay. Now we need to put in the code for flagging bombs because we know that this one is a bomb. Um, we know this one isn't. Nice, nice. Which means this one can't be. Which means this one can't be. This one can't be. That one, that one. Oh man. Oh man. Okay. So this one has to be. Which means this one has to be. Which means this one can't be. So that's those two. That's. Oh, what's. Oh no. These. So these are both bombs. Bomb, bomb, bomb. Okay. So then down here, we know this has to be. Uh, we know this has to be, um, this has to be, which means this can't be, this can't be, that can't be, um, we know this must be, which means this can't, this can't, this can't, oh man, I love when it works, I love when it works, oh, it feels so good, uh, and then... This must be, which means this can't be. This can't be. Uh, this can't be. This can't be. This can't be. So, if this is, that means, ah, oh, yeah, look at that. I gotta go send that to somebody.
Oh, that's delightful. I still don't know why the box colliders were the size that they were. I'm gonna have to look into that. Maybe I'll report that even to Unity. Um, but... Yeah, so this will be... I, I Maybe we'll make this a two-parter. Maybe. I think I might leave it at this and add in a few buttons for restarting. And then maybe eventually get flags in. Cause the, so the thing we need to do for flags is we actually need to check if it's your... In fact, we can... I can show you what I believe should be the case. So if input.getMouse button is zero, that is the left click. Else uh, if it is one, uh, we'll go with this. So this should be what we need to do. I just want to show you that I know where we would be going next. But, you know, it's been a few hours. I want to maybe reward myself with some more satisfactory or something. I can go for a walk. So if we clear out... Oh, okay. So it won't actually work because the on mouse button down only checks left click. Okay. So what we'll need to do is an update, update loop, probably through the board game generator. And that'll raycast onto the squares. Excuse me. Uh, it'll raycast onto the squares. And then from there, um, we would do the, the check. If it's raycasting, we check if it's a left mouse click, if it's a right mouse click. Obviously that doesn't work for touch devices like your phone. But uh, we need to do, if we want to have this work on phones, we, because this isn't UI driven, we need to do the work for, oh, I don't even have any aspect ratios on here to show you. Let me switch it around. So 16 by nine, so nine by 16, nine by 16. Is that gonna, oh, 10 by, okay, whatever. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I thought it was gonna do aspect ratio. Nine by 16, nine. Okay, so you'll see well, if we did mobile and you're playing vertically, I need to make it adjust where the parent is, depending on the scale that you're doing. And then we'll just need to add numbers. So let's delete that one. And we'll make another one, uh, aspect ratio. Oh, I guess it's already up here. So yeah, it's something to consider and I, I probably will do it. Maybe we'll, maybe in this week, if there's a day where I'm not feeling like doing some heavy work with Moosecat Manor, We'll finish polishing this off, but for now, I'm just, I'm pleased as punch that it works. Uh, so let's see here, real quick. Let's do it again. So this has to be, so this can't be, this can't be, that can't be. Uh, this one, that one, that one, that one. Uh, I don't know yet. If these two... Uh, if this one must be, this one must be, which means this one can't be. Nope, 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 nope. And then if we know that this is a two, and we know that this is a two, and that this is a one, this... Oh, game over. Oh. How sad. One more, one more. Hold on. Okay. Ooh. Oh. Uh. Eh. Okay. So this must be, that can't be. Um Okay. Okay. Alright. Um Okay. So these both must be. So that must mean this can't be. Can't be. And then if this one is this, yeah, yes, yeah, so that's fine. No, no. Wait, hold on. So this can't be. Okay. And then, oh, we didn't even put in the if all non-bombs are taken, you win thing. That would be easy enough to do. You just do a count, 
and then reduce the count by one each time you click on one. Anyways, uh, let's finish up the side here. Three. Oh my god. So this must be. This must be. This must be, which means this can't be. All right, and I think we're done. Yeah. All right. I'm very happy with that. Um, I was watching a video today about why game jams are important, and I, you know, I kind of agree. This is nice, like just scope down and think about it. And uh, yeah, that would have been a two-week sprint at work. <laughs> uh, so uh, maybe we'll do another stream later with satisfactory or more of this. I don't know. Uh, if you watched here. I appreciate that. If you're watching on YouTube, I appreciate that. Do whatever you want to do. There's liking, subscribing, or not. You know, it's your life. But I hope you have a good one. Hope your day's nice.